This is uh, the chiller. This is cooling the water for a group of uh, systems that are using uh, water to cool the air condenser. It's a water cooled condenser for a group of air conditioning systems that are uh, contained. They have a compressor inside and the evaporator inside. And this chiller is just sending the water down to the first floor into the ceiling void to cool uh, the water cooled uh, condenser for air conditioning systems. I really doubt that uh, a professional engineer will do this to a condenser because this is something which uh, I flagged it again and again, but the client did nothing about it. So let's talk about the air handling unit's cooling system, how it is working and uh, what enable and disable the compressors, a little bit about the alarms and I hope you understand how the handling unit works. So what we're talking here, we're talking about the air handling unit cooling system and I'm going to explain to you step by step how this cooling system works. So what do we have on the left hand side? We have a group of two compressors which pumps, which circulate the refrigerant through the system. And on the right hand side we have the other two groups of compressors. They've been replaced. We usually like to put on the top of the compressor of the same group like A1, A2 and uh, for the other two compressors B1, B2. The reason why we're doing this is because we want to make sure that other people understand even if it's easy for some of you, some people don't get it right from the first. So these two compressors have a uh, total capacity governed by both of these compressors as you'll see. And, uh, what I try to do here is just to show you something. If you look to these compressors, they are sitting on uh, some rubber parts which will give them uh, good elasticity, like a shock absorber. But on the top, the pipes are rigid and is not flexible. And also the oil communication pipe, as you will see behind, it is also rigid. You see this pipe right here? It is rigid pipe, copper. So while the company tried to save money by turning off one compressor, because they work on stages, and I'll explain to you this later, one compressor will tremble but look at the other one. So when you move one compressor, they both move. Why? Because they connect it with rigid, rigid copper pipe, suction and discharge. And sometimes because uh, of this connection, the pipes are snapping. And always we lose the refrigerant, we have a lot of oil. I disagree with this system, but uh, manufacturer decided that it's the right thing from my point of view it's not I have 35 years in industry and I think I have the right to say if something is right or wrong however if the client doesn't say anything I can only flag things not take action this uh, big boys scroll compressors runs on 47c and uh, they are uh, controlled by a power circuit as you see here we have uh, Siemens safety breakers with adjustable current carrying capabilities and in the lower side we have contactors which have some auxiliary switches for control function. These uh, controllers are uh, ultimately controlled by a uh, CompreHX 
building management control. And as you see here, you have some uh, manual function, but uh, you do not have uh, the option to run the, comp the compressors on manual mode. You can run the gas heater, but then you cannot use the compressors. It's just a choice. So every time you want to run the compressors, you have to call the guys which remotely can uh, alter the function of this building management control. Then we have the safety devices, which is the LP low pressure switch. Then we have the high pressure switch with manual reset, which is a great thing. And then you have uh, the low pressure setback. If the pressure goes too low, you will cut on compressor, so the pressure will come back again higher. What you will see here, this is a small VLT inverter drive. And if you will see, we have two of them. One and two. Uh, these uh, inverters are controlling these fans, they're the condenser fans, ramping up and down the speed accordingly to condenser. It seems to me that is not the case here. And the inverter, it is only used to speed the fans smoothly and not to start uh, on start delta. Usually on this inverter you can uh, attach the control of this inverter to some not to 10 volts or 4 to 20 milliamps and uh, the correspondent of the voltage will be the pressure or the temperature and the fans will ramp up accordingly to the refrigerant uh, temperature and uh, that's the function of these inverters in our case. Going further with the investigation, we have to identify the teeth, the tank valves, and their position. Not very good because I would like to read on them. I personally do not like this ball on vertical position because to set up the super heat as you'll see here uh, we have to move this at 3 o'clock, at 12 o'clock, at 9 o'clock against the gravitation but if it is mounted like that on vertical You can't do that very precise. You can a condenser fan motor will use an inverter. The benefit of the inverter is that you can control the span the fan speed to have the appropriate temperature in a condenser. So if the temperatures go high, the fan will accelerate and vice versa. The set the setback LP, the LP and the HP, two of them are for safety to hold off the system if it loses the refrigerant or if one of the condenser blow up and the pressure is too high. The LP setback it is just a kind of protective control without with an auto reset. The LP it's uh, resetting as well but the LP setback it is just to control the suction pressure onto these compressors. They all, they all could be connected into the BMS control or directly onto the system. So if they directly onto the system, if the BMS control would enable a compressor, the signal will be interrupted at the contactor so the compressor will not start. If this safety will be wired directly onto the BMS, the BMS will not start the system if it will start the system by any software fault then the compressor 
will start running. Now, to speak about the superheat and F gas stuff, uh, I will do this on another video. This video is just so you familiarize with uh, cooling equipment. And uh, I will uh, get again through what I told you so you have a better understanding. Like everything else in this world, we need a control equipment so we control the cooling process. So what are we controlling? We have the BMS which controls the contactors which are protected with uh, circuit breakers and uh, then we have the inverters which drives the condenser fan motors and then we have the compressors which pump the refrigerant through the system we have the fans suction not suction, supply and extract fan that uh, circulate the air through the premises that uh, supposed to be cooled so the, that air will pass through a evaporator and uh, will exchange some temperature the air will lose energy because we'll get cooler. One passes the evaporator to be recharged with energy when it comes back because it cools the store, but basically it steals the heat. Then you have this uh, TV valve. will uh, restrict the refrigerant flow creating a ratio onto this evaporator and the refrigeration process will work before the TV you have a high pressure after the TV you have a low pressure but this is a specific refrigerant course which I will teach you in another video so far I'm happy that you understood if you have a problem here first you look if you have a signal from the BMS then you look to your contactors you check your compressors to see if they are right you have to check the compressor resistance and then you have a model inside a protective relay you have to check as well and also by using the appropriate gauges you have to check if you have enough refrigerant into the system because the 4.7C is planned if you have a reasonable quantity lost normally you have to replace the entire quantity of refrigerant otherwise you will have a different soup than the soup supposed to be the gliding point will change the freezing point the boiling point you have all sorts of trouble and uh, you have to use a scale to measure the quantity of the refrigerant you pull out and how much you put in so this is the control contactors that controls the Presses. I just have to stand up, it's quite complicated here. We have the inverters which controls the condenser fans, and then you have the inverters which control the ventilation system. They integrated that way, so uh, this is the way they will run. First, the supply and fan is supposed to run, the differential pressures which will send the signal to the BMS. 
the BMS will check then through the switches probably not necessarily it's up to how you wire this I would like to wire to have an input from the high pressure switch uh, low pressure switch into the BMS in the same time I would like to have this input straight into this contactor so why I want them onto the BMS because if I send the input to the BMS on the resource data manager I can read the fault via the internet I can see if I have a low pressure before I even attend the store so I see how bad the situation it is to prepare myself if I have that straight onto the BMS the BMS will stop doing it which is great but if there will be any software issue or glitch then uh, the BMS will try to start the compressor and the compressor will short cycle if it still got some refrigerant inside.